Crypto prices at this hour are actually uh, picking up a bit. We have Bitcoin moving higher by a third of a percent to 44,259. Ethereum is moving higher by one and three quarters percent. It's above 3,100. And then you see XRP up a three quarters of a percent to 84 cents. Ether and XRP specifically, both tokens created to develop underlying platforms, Ethereum and Ripple, but the Securities and Exchange Commission is only filing a lawsuit against Ripple XRP, alleging it's been selling itself as a currency, but it's, quote, really a security that should be held to tighter regulatory standards. Yesterday, we pressed SEC Chair Gary Gensler on this issue. Listen to what he said. Where do you draw the line, the distinction between what is a security and what is an actual currency? You know, example A, what Ripple did, selling XRP to build out its underlying blockchain network, no different than example B, Ethereum floating an ICO, uh, you know, a, a, a coin offering uh, to help its underlying Ethereum blockchain. There is no difference. It's pretty straightforward. Raise money from the public, as you say. We have a basic bargain of full and fair disclosure and anti-fraud protections, and you register with the government agency called the Securities and Exchange Commission. And that's really what we're trying to do, is help continue with that basic bargain. We're technology neutral. If people want to invest or speculate in this field, then these tokens and, most importantly, the platforms, the trading and lending platforms come in, register, do it within the law, not trying to skirt the law. Well, tomorrow, documents in the case are expected to be unsealed and may give greater clarity on which side is right. And as the growing crypto universe watches and waits, let's bring in CoinGeek's chief Bitcoin historian, Kurt Wooker Jr. Kurt, I love the title. Great to have you here. What did you make of what Gary Gensler said? And do you see a difference? Am I wrong on this? Is there some difference between Ether and XRP? Not in my opinion, no. Ethereum was issued in a crowd sale. Uh, it was arguably the first ICO. Uh, we've heard from Vitalik Buterin and Joe Lubin on stage that they issued it the way they issued it in order to raise money so they could create Ethereum 2.0. And if you recall, this whole thing that Ethereum is not a security is based largely on the opinion of, of Hinman, uh, who basically said it, it just barely made its way through because of proof of work, which is something we know is on the roadmap uh, of Ethereum to get away from. So. I, th I think the, the argument that Ethereum is not a security is a paper-thin argument at best. Okay, so Hinman, you said that's Bill Hinman, who worked at the SEC. This predates Gary Gensler, along with Jay Clayton, who headed the SEC. And both, it seemed, were kind of in disagreement with each other, depending on which day they were talking about it. But William Hinman was very clear when he said, Ether is not a security, hence, I guess it's a currency, right? And And therefore... Gensler comes, he's left holding the bag. I don't see how, if he's going to sue Ripple XRP, that he doesn't go after Ether, at least make it look like he is. I would agree completely. And I say this as someone who's who's generally a fan of Gensler. I, I think the, the whole blockchain economy is very lucky to have an SEC chairman that really seems to care about the process. He he cares about the technology. He's he's quite educated. He's not your typical you know, old man shakes fist at cloud kind of guy uh, just trying to regulate everything into <laughs> compliance. Uh, I, I think he, he really seems to care about and like the technology. So I'd like to see a little more consistency from that. OK, uh, I want to get to when we'll see a spot Bitcoin ETF. He really doesn't see it at the moment. And I was looking into history of ETFs. It took something like seven to eight years for the spider, the S&P ETF, the pro shares to come into existence. So this could be a long road to hoe, right? In, indeed. And, and I think part of it is that, you know, an ETF, um, it, it's one of those things that was created so people could hold difficult commodities in portfolios. And, and Bitcoin's one of those things that, you know, you don't have to ship stuff around the world and, and manage this kind of thing. So like paper Bitcoin has always been one of those things that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, in my opinion. And I think regulators probably look at it the same way and say, well, if you want exposure of Bitcoin to your portfolio, there are a lot of ways to do it. And ETF is it's just not that big of a step, in my opinion. I, I understand why they want it, but ultimately the technology sort of lends itself to not really needing that sort of financial vehicle in the first place. 
the FTX CEO uh, of our good friend Sam Bakeman-Fried, he came out and he said that we are in the crypto autumn. Now, we've heard of the crypto winter, which is these long stretches where crypto just doesn't do anything. He says it's the autumn, but I need to talk to you as the Bitcoin historian at CoinGeek. Tell me where this, where the price of Bitcoin goes, because last year it was, oh, it's going to hit 100,000. This year, we're not even at the half point of 100,000. What do you predict for Bitcoin this year? You know, I've, I've not been a big Bitcoin bull for, for a long time. I, I think since the, the price broke out over $20,000, that, that number has never been retested. Uh, it exploded up, uh, then it exploded up uh, alongside the meme stonk craze. Uh, ultimately, Elon Musk uh, basically doubled the price of Bitcoin with, him, with his own opinion on Twitter and then pulled back and, and maybe unilaterally crashed the market uh, as well, the, or the first big dip. Uh, but ultimately, you know, we're, we're seeing celebrities with NFT profile pictures on Twitter and, and, and the typical, uh, you know, did grandma ask you about Bitcoin at Christmas? That's your, your sell signal right there. Um, I, I just think, frankly, it's time. We've had a very long bull run, uh, and these things come in cycles. I think people need to cool off, and people need to reassess what the technology is actually for. You know, we can we can speculate forever, but at some point, there needs to be like value creation and not just value absorption. And we've really seen like 13 years of value absorption across the Bitcoin market. And I, I personally would really like to see you know, a, a disruptive business created with the technology that makes it that the price starts to outperform your typical. Uh, just your risk assets. We'll be watching it all. We've been covering this very closely for years now. Kurt, great to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you.